Have you created a leads method chart, but you're not sure what it means or how it can help you? Hi, I'm Dana Leeds, the creator of the leads method. By the end of this video, you'll be able to identify who's in each cluster, understand how they're related to each other, and most importantly, discover how they connect to you. Plus, stick around to the end where I'll show you how I use this technique to help an adopted friend identify her biological parents. Let's get started. Now, after creating leads method chart like this, you'll have different color clusters. We're gonna work with each cluster one at a time. Within each color cluster, we're gonna figure out how the people in that cluster are related to each other. And we'll do this by examining trees. We're gonna look at the trees that they do have and gather up to their eight great grandparent surnames. Then we will look for repeating surnames or even repeating people within that cluster. If you can't find any, then you can go back another generation and look at the 16 great great grandparents. Now, sometimes you've got to build trees for the people. Maybe they have very small trees and you have to build them out, or maybe they don't have any trees at all. And this is where Ancestry DNA's Enhanced Shared Matches or the Shared Matches Pro tool can really help. And I'm going to put a video up there that shows that No Trees, No Problem video that I created a few weeks ago, and you might check that one out. Now this is just pretend data. I have these four color clusters, but I'm gonna show you the basics of what I do to figure out who's in a cluster and how they're related to each other. And we're gonna look at the blue cluster. We have Don, George, Sherry, and Beth. Now here I have these trees for Don, George, Sherry, and Beth, and I've went to the eight great grandparents like I mentioned in the beginning. And so we look at those trees. Some like Don has all eight great grandparents, George only has four, Beth has four, Sherry has four. You might even only have one or two. But now we're gonna look and we're gonna look for surnames that repeat or actual people or couples that repeat. So let's check this out. We have David Phelps and Lisa Strong on Don Smith's tree. Well, we also have David Phelps and Lisa Strong on Sherry's tree. And on George's tree, we have a Nancy Phelps. And on Beth's tree, we have a Nora Phelps. So most likely these blue clusters formed because these people are all related to David Phelps and Lisa Strong. So our target people are David Phelps and Lisa Strong. In fact, Nancy Phelps and Nora Phelps there on the right are probably daughters of David and Lisa. Now this is pretend data and so it all came together nicely, but I'm gonna show you how this works with real data. So for this case, we're gonna use some DNA matches that I'm pretty familiar with. These are my dad's matches. And on the right, we have his leads method chart with matches between 490 centimorgans. He actually had more matches than this, but I took some out just to simplify it and make it fit on the screen better. Now we're gonna look specifically at his blue cluster, and we're gonna do that by working with five matches. Because when we look at the people in a cluster, we don't have to identify every person in the cluster and figure out how they're related to each other and then how they're related to you. We just need to get enough of those matches that we have a good solid case to work forward from. And so in this case, we're gonna work with five matches, Dan, Janice, GH, KC, and Cheryl. Now the blue cluster is my dad's maternal grandmother's tree. So his mom's moms. And his grandmother was Myrtle Copenbarger. Her parents are Josiah Copenbarger and Elizabeth Bennett. Josiah's are Peter Copenbarger and Polly Randolph. And Elizabeth's are Henry Bennett and Ellender Bookout. So we're specifically going to pay attention to the surnames Copenbarger, Randolph, Bennett, and Bookout. And so here's Dan's tree. And it's very simple. It's him and then his father and then his paternal grandparents. And I recognize Edward Copenbarger. You probably recognize that Copenbarger surname. And so to start with this match, I'm not going to just add this to my tree if I didn't already have Dan in my tree. I'm going to do traditional genealogy and make sure all of this makes sense. And then I'm going to do what I call diagram the cluster. And so I'm going to start with how Dan is related to my dad's part of the family. So Dan is a great grandson of Josiah Copenbarger and Elizabeth Bennett. And so I've added the path there through Edward and then through a child and then to Dan. Then we go to the next person. So the next person on here was Janice and here's her tree. So Ancestry had highlighted Josiah Copenbarger and Elizabeth Bennett there in the green boxes. These are common ancestor hints or through line hints. They're very much related. 
It's showing me that this is how Ancestry thinks my dad and Janice are related. So anytime Ancestry gives us hints, we need to confirm them, like do traditional genealogy to prove it or prove that it's wrong because they are sometimes wrong. And now I've added her to this diagram. She's on the right and she's a great granddaughter of Josiah Comerbarger and Elizabeth Bennett through a different child. Now let's move on to the third blue match. The third blue match is GH. He has a lot of people on his tree, 652, but it's really mainly on his dad's dad's part of the tree. And so I've hidden some of this, but I didn't recognize anybody in his tree that I could see right here. But on the left, you can see a common ancestor hint. And it's saying how they think GH and my dad might be related. And I can click on one of these view relationship to go to that through lines so I can look and see how they're predicting they're related. And here's the prediction. So on the left is my dad, JRS, and he's a descendant, a great grandchild of Josiah Kopenberger and Elizabeth Bennett. And the right is GH. And again, I would confirm each of these steps and make sure that I agree. And then I add them to my diagram. And GH is on the right. He is a great, great grandchild of Josiah and Elizabeth through one of their daughters. And so I continue to diagram to show how the people in this cluster are related to each other. And now for the fourth person in this blue cluster, KC. Now KC has a private tree. You can see it right here. And he or she has a large tree, 1,540 people, but it's private. But if it's private and they didn't mark it unsearchable, Ancestry can still use the, those common ancestor hints or through line hints to figure out a likely connection. So even though I can't see the tree, Ancestry is kind of peeking behind that curtain and showing me that relationship. So if you don't want people to be able to do that with your data, you need to make sure your private tree is also unsearchable. So again, I'm gonna click on here to get to that through line hint. And here's how they think JRS and KC are related to each other. So second cousins through two different children of Josiah and Elizabeth. Again, I will check all this out and I've added KC to my diagram. Clear on the right, KC is a great grandchild of Josiah and Elizabeth through another son. Now we've got one more person to add, the fifth person. The fifth person is Cheryl. Now Cheryl has an unlinked public tree. So she has not taken that extra step and linked her DNA to the tree. So we can't have through line hints or common ancestor hints when somebody hasn't linked their DNA. But they did have a tree I could look at. And so here's that tree. Again, it's quite small. It's just Cheryl and it shows her dad and her mom. And I have Juanita on my tree. But this person that she's saying is her son is actually her husband. The tree is just not built correctly. And so now that I have Juanita on my tree, I just needed to prove that Cheryl is her daughter. So I've added Cheryl, she's clear on the right. Now Josiah Copenberg and Elizabeth Bennett are right here. And Cheryl is actually not a descendant of them, but instead she's a descendant of Elizabeth's parents, Henry Bennett and Ellender Bookout. And so we come down through them. So it actually still shows that connection but not everybody is just a direct descendant of Josiah and Elizabeth. But now we can see why that cluster formed. That's the beauty of this. That's the beauty of clustering, that everybody's connected for a reason because they're all connected. They're all related to Josiah and Elizabeth and my dad and myself are related to this couple too. So where does my dad fit in? My dad is here. He's the tester. He is also a descendant of Josiah and Elizabeth through one of their other children, Myrtle. And so this is why the cluster formed and how my dad is related to them. Now, if you've watched my YouTube video, Sort Your DNA Matches into Color Clusters, which I'll link to up here, then you know that I talk about using DNA matches between 490 centimorgans and that they're basically second and third cousins. On this chart, I've shown you which are my dad's second and third cousins. So we've got Dan, Janice, and Casey that are his second cousins because they share great grandparents in common. GH is a generation removed, so they are a second cousin once removed because they share his great grandparents with him, but they're a generation removed. And then we have Cheryl on the right, who is a third cousin once removed because they share great, great grandparents with my dad and they're a generation removed. 
So if I didn't know how my dad was related to this cluster, let's say that this was an unknown part of his tree, I could look at this and my guess would be that he is a great grandchild of Josiah and Elizabeth because we have these second cousins and third cousin matches showing here. And they're all pointing back to that couple, Josiah and Elizabeth. Now let's look at a unknown biological parent case so I can show you a little better. Now this is Eileen. I've changed her name and I've privatized her matches, but she's a real life friend who asked if I could help her identify her biological parents. So she was adopted and she was searching for her biological parents. She had five clusters form. There's two that are great clusters, but then we have three really tiny ones. And so my next step is to figure out, well, which of these matches has trees? And especially because I saw this before enhanced shared matches, Plus, we're just trying to take the easiest path we can take. And so if we can get a handful of matches that make sense and we can solve this without building trees for people who don't have any trees, then that's what I'd rather do. And so I looked at the trees and we've got a lot of pretty small trees, including some with one person. And when I say there's one person, that person usually has a first and last name and maybe a date or a place or something where I can probably figure out who they are but we've got quite a few private trees and I'm really not even gonna look at green, purple, and yellow. We're gonna focus on blue and red. So we're gonna start with blue. And again, just like what we did on the example and then on my dad's, we're gonna list surnames up to the eight great grandparent level. Now I'm not gonna actually show you this on Ancestry, but I'm gonna look at those trees and list up to the eight great grandparent surnames. Now, this is the blue cluster. Like I said, some people only had one surname, like Susan and Gary there on the right side. Nobody actually even had all eight surnames, but you can see the surnames I found on these six trees. So now we're gonna look for surnames that repeat. And we see Holly has a Beck, Christopher has a Beck, and Sherry has a Beck. So Beck is our target surname. And in this case, we didn't have a couple, although these might be three children of some couple but we have this connection. And so then I start to diagram those matches. I look at the trees and I'm trying to build them all back where they connect in some way. And here's what I found. So we have Holly, Christopher, and Sherry on the left. They all went back to Charles and Caroline Beck. But on the right, we also had KZE, who was somebody in this um, cluster. So Ernest Beck married Winona Helvig, and that's how KZE is connected to this cluster. And so we figured out basically how this cluster is connected, and they're connected specifically around the couple of Ernest Beck and Winona Helvig, because without that relationship, there wouldn't be a blue cluster. And again, we're using mainly second and third cousins, and there's more to this, but my guess would be that Eileen is a great-grandchild of Ernest Beck and Winona Helvig. Now we're going to look at the red cluster. There were seven people in the red cluster that had some type of tree. Again, some only had one or two surnames in them. But I'm going to write down those eight surnames or up to eight surnames and then look for surnames that repeat. And let's see what we have. We have Richard with the Haynes, Joyce with the Haynes, and Cheryl with the Haynes. And so now I'm looking at their trees and potentially building them back further until I start seeing a connection. And that's our target surname. And so here's this cluster and I found four people who connected. Now I've added in a fourth person, Kim, here at 62 Cinemorgans because I had only found a connection to the other three. On the left, we have JC and Kim who are both great grandchildren of Elizabeth Haynes who married a Bert Holt. And then if we go up a generation, Elizabeth's parents were John Haynes and Helen, with whose last name is unknown. And we have David and Susan, who are great-grandchildren of that couple. And so in this case, we can see how they're all connected because they're all descendants of John Haynes and Helen. And remember, Haynes was that surname we were going after. And so now again, I can surmise or hypothesize that Eileen is a descendant, probably a great-grandchild of John Haynes and Helen. Now, Eileen's case took more work because I needed to figure out some of the other pieces of that puzzle, but I was able to identify her biological parents for her using this methodology. Now, if you want to know more about using the leads method, you can check the description below and I'll link to the first video in this series, but also stay tuned because I'm gonna be presenting more on the leads method in the coming weeks. You can also sign up for my newsletter, like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.